Okay, so this um, experiment is to nitrate a benzene ring. It's quite a nasty experiment. You need to use concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid. Um, and I want to be really careful that I don't put too many nitro groups onto my benzene ring um, because I'll make an explosive product. So I've taken some steps to make sure that doesn't happen. One of them, as you can see here, is I'm keeping everything extremely cold. So I've got really good ice baths here and I put salt on them as well so that I can keep the temperature as low as I possibly can. The other thing I've done is to use a deactivated arene. So I'm using um, methyl benzoate. So that should help restrict and limit the number of nitro groups that I'm able to put onto my benzene ring. So I've got first of all here a nitrating mixture. So this is mixed up from equal amounts of concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid. I've got a total of four centimetres cubed of that nitrating mixture in this measuring cylinder. In this vessel over here, this conical flask, I've got um, the methyl benzoate and I've already added five centimetres cubed of concentrated sulfuric acid to this one as well. I'm just going to check the temperature. This is really important that my temperature is below 10 degrees C the whole time. Now at the moment I think it's on four degrees C. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on the, um, from the camera um, because it's quite down below the neck of the conical flask but it's on four degrees C so it's definitely well below. I've got a nice clean glass dropper here and I'm going to very slowly add a couple of drops at a time to my, um, to my benzene and just keep checking the temperature and making sure that it stays nice and low. This may take a long time, so I may do a few of them and then come back to you when I've nearly finished. I think I added about four drops in. I was quite um, hasty. <laughs> and it's already gone up from four degrees C to seven degrees C. So I, you can see that I need to be really cautious with this. And it's going to take quite a while to add my, all of my nitrating mixture, all four centimetres cubed of it, um, to, my, to my reaction in my conical flask here. So it's going to be very slow. So I think I'll do that and then I'll join you later when I've um, when I've nearly finished. Okay, I've finally added all the nitrating mixture to my conical flask here. Um, I've kept the temperature really well below um, 10 degrees. Uh, it's actually on about two degrees at the moment. It's taken almost 25 minutes to add four centimeters cubed of nitrating mixture to my conical flask here. Now you can see the conical flask, it's, it's quite oily and resinous looking, the stuff that's in there. And it's got a kind of yellow tinge to it as well. The next stage of the reaction is um, I need to leave this to stand at room temperature for 15 minutes. So I'm just going to leave this here on the bench. I don't think we need to film and watch all of that, but we'll come back in 15 minutes and have a look at it then. Okay, so this has now been standing at room temperature for at least 15 minutes, in fact almost 20 minutes. Um, I've now got to pour it over some crushed ice. And you can see it's already starting to look a little bit cloudy as, it's, as the... Um, nitrated product is starting to crystallise out. So I've got to stir this now until all that crushed ice has melted and hopefully I should have a nice amount of crystalline nitrated methyl benzoate which I'll be able to recrystallise. So I'll join you again in a minute. Okay so my ice has melted now, my crushed ice, and I've got all my solid product in there. So my first job is to filter this and I'm going to filter it under reduced pressure so that means using a Buchner funnel and the suction pump. So I'll turn the suction pump on and filter to extract my product. I'm holding the Buchner funnel really tight down into the conical flask here to make sure there's a really good seal and I get really good suction coming through my paper. So if you can see in the top of the funnel now, you can see there's lots of little nasty gritty looking white particles of my um, product and that's going to need recrystallising. 
So the first job is to transfer this product into a nice clean beaker and then I'm going to re recrystallize it from the minimum amount of hot ethanol. So I'll join you again in a moment when I've transferred it to the beaker. Okay, so this is my um, product that I've extracted from um, the Buchner funnel and I'm now going to transfer it to this water bath where I've got some nice warm ethanol, some hot ethanol. And I'm going to try to recrystallize it from the minimum amount of hot ethanol. So I'm going to add some ethanol to the mixture and try to get it to dissolve. Okay. I think this may take a little bit of time. I might come back to you when I've got it to dissolve already. Okay, so I've got that to dissolve now in this minimum amount of hot ethanol. And now what I want to do is to suction filter it through hot apparatus. So I've already um, poured a, a kettle full of hot water through this to heat it up. So I'm going to turn on my um, suction filter. And this time this, the product that I want is going to be in the bottom. It should be the filtrate. Okay, I think I've extracted as much as I'm going to from that. I'm going to transfer this into a nice clean beaker and then hopefully as I cool it over ice, you can see it's already starting to come out as crystals, as I cool it in more ice those crystals should grow and develop and get better and better. So I'll join you again in a moment when I can show you how those crystals have now formed um, and I should have a really nice big beaker. So I've been cooling this now in an ice bath and it's made quite a lot of crystals. I've been mashing them up as, it's been, as they've been forming because they got quite um, sort of solid and stuck together. Um, but I've got a good amount of product in there and I think it's probably ready now to um, filter for the final stage. So if I remove that, I'm going to go over again to my suction filtration apparatus. I could do this just under gravity through a normal funnel, but it's a little bit faster to do it through suction filtration. So I'm going to pour this through um, through my suction filtration apparatus and I've got some ice cold ethanol here that's been waiting in an ice bath for me that I'm going to use to, to rinse around um, and help make sure that the last little dregs have come out of my beaker and I've washed off any um, last little dregs off my crystals so then I should have really nice pure crystals in my, in my funnel. Okay, here we go. Use a little bit of the ice cold ethanol to swill out my beaker. Pull the funnel down to get a good suction on it. Now I could, if I had a plunger that was the right size, press that down inside my, um, inside my funnel there to try to squeeze out the last little drops of solvent. And I'm not going to do that because it crushes the crystals a little bit um, and I'm not in any haste to dry them. So I'm just going to let them air dry um, to constant mass and then I know I've got a really nice pure sample of it. At the moment I think I've sucked quite a lot of the solvent out of that. If I show you that to you now in the funnel, might not be able to see it because it's very pale and it just looks like um, it might just look like the paper but what I'm going to do now is to try to lift that out and transfer it onto a watch glass um, so that I can leave it to air dry. So I've transferred my product now onto a watch glass and I should leave that to dry really to air dry to constant mass and then I could transfer it to a specimen bottle um, and calculate my percentage yield if I wanted to, or probably more likely, as I've spent all this time recrystallizing it, I might like to try to take a sample and test the melting point of it. So I, I'm suspecting that I've got here, or hoping that I've got here, methyl 3 nitro benzoate because that was, that was the target molecule. So the way to really prove that I've got that would be to take a dry sample of this product and test its melting point and check that it's got the correct melting point.